Greetings and welcome back to PB with Jay. Today's going to be kind of an interesting episode because it's going to be a hybrid of new things that I'm doing for the channel as well as some old recipes you might have seen before in past videos. Either way, this is a collection of some of my family's favorite plant-based snacks and staples. and delicious. That's the best kale chip I've ever had. You can't stop eating it, can you? Recipes by <laughs> Willie. Figure it out yourself. Everything from cauliflower popcorn, whole wheat buns, granola bars, and so much more. And we've got a pretty awesome sponsor for this video who sent me a new kitchen toy that I'm gonna show you later on the video. So stay tuned for that because they've also got a sweet deal for you. This is a beast of a video, so I highly recommend watching it straight through from beginning to end. However, in the future, you can use the description down below. I've got every recipe organized by chapters, so you can jump around as you choose. If you've got a plant-based snack or staple that you'd like to see me do in a future edition of a video like this, let me know in the comments down below. Or just say hello and other things. I love all comments. I respond to most of them. On that moment, I'd like to take a moment to say hi to some of our newer subscribers. Shirian from Alabama. Julie from Melbourne, Tanya from Ottawa, Jane from Ohio, and Corinne from Finland. If you want to shout out in your comment, don't forget to mention your name and where you're watching from. If at any point during this video you like what you see, hit that like button and hit subscribe for more videos like this. Now to start us off, we've got a recipe that I've hinted at in a previous video that you all asked for. It is something that is delicious enough for dessert, but healthy enough for breakfast. Love this thing. So what are you making? I'm making apple crumble from our apples, from our apple tree. Just oh, a couple crumble. apples from our apple tree. Oh, yeah, just a few. So you're, I mean, if people don't have one of these fancy machines. Peel and slice, or if you want to eat the peel, you can keep peel on. I just prefer for a crumble to take it off, but that's just me. I would leave it on because I'm lazy and also there's nutrients in the skin. Yeah, especially these apples actually. It's their organic and from our tree. I'm gonna I'm gonna dehydrate the skins. But how many regular sized apples would you say this is? I don't know. Just fill okay, here's the thing. This is what I do. You take the dish that you wanna bake it in <laughs> and you just fill it as full as you like. Like I like it really full. I like a lot of fruit. If I don't have a lot of apples, I'll just mix in another fruit, like a frozen, something we have frozen or whatever, and just, you just fill it. It's kind of like a pie, like just fill her up. I like a lot of fruit. So I sprinkle a lot of cinnamon. If you like cinnamon, use a lot. How much is a lot? Like a tablespoon? I don't know, just sprinkle it on and mix it up, man. Recipes but... by Willie. <laughs> Figure it out yourself. No, it's kind of by, like if you like a lot, put lots on. Right. Like, don't like completely cover them, but you want every apple to have some cinnamon on it, right? There you My go. apples have turned a little brown, so it's a little tricky to see. But you're also gonna put cinnamon in the topping. So keep that in mind if you're not a huge cinnamon -y person. And again, the amount is probably however much you like. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not wrong. Well, on that the topping, I just used two cups of rolled oats. You measured them? Yeah, I always measure the oats. And this I measured for the people. I think it's gonna be about a quarter cup of almond butter. And then I put in a tablespoon of vegan butter if it's more desserty and want it a little less healthy. But because this is gonna be breakfast for my children, I'm not doing that. And about two tablespoons of maple syrup. Oh, and don't forget, more cinnamon. You I mash it all together until the oats and the nut butter, I mean, I use almond butter, you can use any nut butter. I guess if you have a nut allergy, you could use the vegan butter if you want it, If you but if you want it to be whole food plant-based, then you could use maybe the, tahini, yeah. if you like that, or sun butter, pumpkin seed butter, wow butter, you know, your favorite nut-free butter. So the idea is that you want the oats to be mixed in and not have a dry, Oops, a dry clump. So if you find that you mix it and there's still some dry, then you might consider either adding more maple syrup or more almond butter, but I think this is gonna be... So how long do you make this for? Uh, about 45 minutes. And I would say it browns up better with a little bit of vegan butter, but if you're 
aim is to be whole food plant-based, which is what I'm doing here because this is going to be breakfast for my kids. It's a sneaky way. Sneaky. They think it's a treat they're having dessert for breakfast. Even big kids. They're like, oh yeah, apple crumble for breakfast. <laughs> is there enough for a Jeremy in there? Oh, maybe. Maybe I would bake it for 40 minutes with the lid on and then five minutes with the lid off just to help it brown a bit on top. Depending on the kind of apple you have, you might want to just keep an eye on it. Yeah. All right, bye-bye. See you in 40, maybe 35 minutes because you're soft apple. Lots of boring math later. So as a dessert, we would probably serve this warm right if we make it, but sometimes we'll make it in advance and uh, just portion it out. I've added some extra fruit to the bottom, some fresh strawberries and bananas in there, just to make it more of a breakfast meal. Bulk it out a bit, but tree enough for dessert, healthy enough for breakfast. This one is a no-brainer. And we used apples here mostly, but like my wife said, you can swap it out with frozen fruit, other fresh fruit you've got, peaches are great in this. You can really make it your own. And since my wife peeled the apples, I decided to toss the skins in some cinnamon and dehydrate them. These didn't take very long at all. I think I put them on at around 130 degrees Fahrenheit for about two hours. Much later. Look, Woody. Tree spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. So these sort of worked a little bit. You know, the problem is we have this dehydrator that we've had for over a decade and I've never really loved it, which is probably why I don't use it as much as I normally would. Luckily, I got a new toy coming in the mail that's gonna help with that. But first, here's another staple. So one of our go-to staples that we always try to have on hand is a chia jam. What's fun about this is you can make this with any fruit, fresh or frozen, you've got on hand, pretty much. Uh, we're a little bit low on fresh fruit, so I'm gonna check out my freezer and see what we got. I might even just throw a bunch of random stuff together just because. Avery, you wanna help me make jam? No. Great, thanks, bye. Uh, I like to use about four cups of fruit. So let's just go scavenge and find some random things and make up a, a jam that will probably be pretty tasty. So I've got a mixture of mangoes and blueberries and cherries, and now we're just gonna dump those into a pot and get it cooking down. And then after like, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, it's gonna start to get a bit watery and mushy. The fruit are gonna break down. Uh, and then once it's watery like that, we're gonna add in the chia seeds and they'll help thicken up that liquid and, and absorb it and whatnot. And then we're just gonna let that simmer for, I don't know, eight to 10 minutes or so. And then once it thickens, we're just gonna pour it into either the jars or just a bowl to let it cool down and come to room temperature before we put it in the fridge. And that's it, that's jam. If you wanna add any extracts like vanilla, you can do that at that point too where you're starting to let it cool down. Um, but the fruit itself should just taste Look how pretty this is. I want that cool down and then we'll give it a whirl and see if it tastes any good. I'm gonna try this jam. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try jam. Mango wow. cherry berry. It's so nice of you to make me a bowl of jam. Yeah, just go, that's your snack. Okay, that's my breakfast, give back her. Woody? Can you come back though, seriously? Mmm, it's warm and delicious. I just threw in berries, cherries, and mango. I know, it's our normal jam. That's our normal jam, but the fruit combination is different. Ah! Like the combination of fruit. Well, you can do whatever combination you'd like. I know, I told the people that, but I haven't done this one before. Mm. It tastes delicious. Oh! I've done all the combinations of frozen Oh, fruit. well, aren't you fancy? And now we come to something that I often make on a weekly basis, especially in the fall season going into winter. It's an awesome snack, but it's also healthy enough to have for breakfast and treaty enough to have for dessert if you wanted to. And it's super customizable to what you have on hand. And especially if you've got 
a challenge like being gluten-free. I love me a muffin. The problem with most muffins that you buy outside of your home is that they're more of a dessert than they are a snack because they're loaded with oil and processed sugar. We avoid that by using applesauce instead of oil and then bananas instead of sugar. These are also naturally gluten-free because I'm using oat flour. If you don't have any oat flour on hand, but you have a blender and oats, you can make your own in about 30 seconds in a high-speed blender. If you don't want to make these gluten-free, you can easily just swap this out with flour. We're gonna mix all of our dry ingredients. So we've got two cups of oat flour in here. Then we've got flaxseed, baking soda, baking powder, and cinnamon. So now we've got our dry ingredients. We're gonna mix them together until they're well combined. Now we got four berry ripe bananas in here. We're gonna mix them up in the food processor until they're just nice and mashy. Great. Now we're gonna add in about a half a cup of fruit juice. Whatever you got on hand works. This is an apple pomegranate mix. Some applesauce. I'm not just putting the applesauce in because it's an apple muffin. I'm putting it in in place of oil. A half a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and a cap full of vanilla. We're gonna puree that until it's all mixed together. We're gonna pour our wet mixture into our dry mixture and mix it up just enough so that it's combined. Now we're gonna add our mix-ins two cups of apples. You can use any kind of fruit you want. And a half a cup of raisins. You could add nuts, dried fruit, chocolate chips, anything you want in there. And now we'll just stir it together until everything is evenly incorporated. Now we're just gonna scoop it into our muffin molds. I like to use an ice cream scoop. Just keep on filling them until you've got about the same amount in every single pan. So I'm gonna bake these at 375 for 20 to 25 minutes. If you're baking yours in a silicon muffin pan too, the trick is to let them rest for 10 to 15 minutes and then pop them out gently and let them rest upside down. They'll firm up much better that way. Mm. They're soft and moist. It tastes like autumn and a little comforting package. You can customize these muffins to whatever flavors you want. Use seasonal fruit, frozen fruit's fine too. Nuts, dried fruit, chocolate, whatever you want. Mmm, muffins. Delivery, delivery. Let me take a moment to tell you about our awesome sponsor for this episode, London Sunshine. Or more importantly, their six tray dehydrator. We're gonna dehydrate the old dehydrator and this dehydrator. Will it dehydrate? It's our new video series. You should do that. This thing is a beast. It comes with a bunch of these mesh trays for smaller items, these metal trays for bigger things like jerky or dried fruit. And it also comes with this little bad boy, which we're gonna use in just a second. I've been wanting to up my dehydrator game for a while, so this couldn't have come at a better time. This is perfect for making so many different kinds of snacks and staples from dried fruit. You can dry your own herbs in this thing, mushroom jerky, and keep watching, because in this video, I'm gonna take this thing through the gamut. We're gonna make kale chips, cauliflower popcorn, banana chips. But before we do, if you think this is the kind of item that you would love to have in your kitchen, I have got a 10% off discount code, PB with J. Use it in the link down below, click on that, pick it out, use the code, save some money. Now let's dry some fruit. So the first snack recipe I'm gonna make using this new dehydrator from London Sunshine is fruit leather. You can use pretty much any fruit to make fruit leather. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just blend up some apples from our farm until they're into basically applesauce. Need more apples. I'm gonna add some cinnamon and that's it. If you're gonna try it, what are you gonna give me? Tastes like applesauce. I'm gonna spread it out onto this tray and then I'm gonna bake it. It's gonna be a bit of a testing ground um, because different fruits have different consistency, but I'm gonna try six to seven hours. So we're gonna do it at 135 and then just see how it feels. Don't mind me, I'm just in my art room drying fruit. I am so excited to play with this new toy. I 
my first attempt making fruit leather in this. Is it, is it too hard? Mmm. No, I still. Mm. Okay. And a little thin. Maybe you should like double it. Well, it was it was pouring over the pan, so I couldn't put it. Mm. I could maybe cook it for less time. That's great. Mmm. Are you gonna leave any? No. I think not. No, let's save it. For this is supposed to be a snack. Oh, fun. Anyway, so this is a, a solid snack staple, and this dehydrator works great. This that is so. That pan is really nice. It's so much more consistent than the one we were using before. No, I was like. I'm so excited to play with this more. I'm in love already. One of the most consumed products that people don't even necessarily associate with being plant-based is non-dairy milk. So that's almond milk, oat milk, cashew milk, soy milk, and people spend hundreds of dollars a year buying it in the store. But I'm gonna show you how to make your own. Today, we're using oat milk, but the same process works no matter what you're using. So all you really need is a high-speed blender and a nut milk bag. So the first thing we're gonna do is put four cups of water into our blender, and then we're gonna add a cup of oats. Put the lid on, and then we're gonna crank it on high for 30 seconds to about a minute, just until everything's nicely combined. After that, we're gonna pour it into the nut milk bag and capture it inside a large container. It's a bit messy, so you're gonna want as big a container as possible. And this is where you see why it's still called milk, because you literally have to milk the bag just to squeeze all that wonderful goodness out. So the cleanup for this is, you know, a bit of a thing with a nut milk bag, but I know some people will also use the refuge inside of here to make cookies and other things. Why buy it at the store when you can milk it at home? So this, amount fits into a large mason jar. There you have it, now you've got oat milk. So this stores at least four to five days inside the fridge. You're gonna notice that it'll separate. All you have to do is give it a good shake and then it's ready to use. Non-dairy plant-based milk. If you have a little extra time and the right tools, there's no reason why you need to buy it at the store. Hey, so another staple that we haven't made in a while, but is awesome, and I haven't ever done in a dehydrator, is kale chips. If you don't have one of these, it's like your best friend for getting kale ready because you just put it through like the appropriate hole and it just helps get rid of the stem real easy. I mean, not that it's like super hard to get rid of the stem, but uh, you know, why not? And then it says just the, the recipe I'm using from the London Company's book says to uh, Cut them into bite-sized pieces. So, you know. The real trick to kale is to massage the leaves. Uh, and so, you, I mean, a lot of people use oil just because people are used to cooking with oil, but lemon works really nice too. I'm gonna use aquafaba, but uh, you just wanna break it down so it's a bit more tender. Then you cover in spices, lay it all out, and then, usually in an oven, it's ready in like, I don't know, 20 minutes, an hour, maybe? Probably not that. But I'm, I'm interested in doing it in, uh, in the dehydrator because I always feel like the oven cooks it too fast or just shrivels it up too much. I wonder if, like, if, if, the, if the dehydrator will actually make it more like an actual chip. This thing actually comes with six racks, but because uh, I only needed three, I'm gonna separate them nicely. So it goes down in like half an hour increments. So we're gonna cook this at uh, 140 degrees for like four and a half hours and see how that goes. Few moments later. Yes! No. Yeah, sure. There we go. Yeah? Yeah. You got more than just good? Oh, he's going for more. Going everywhere. He's watching the Blue Jays game, so he's not in review mode. This is really tasty and really crunchy. Like, you could hear the crunch from him. Woo! There's so much flavor in that. That's without oil. That's just using aquafaba. A little bit of chickpea juice. Wow! That's the best kale chip I've ever had. Usually they get all shriveled up and burnt. That's fantastic. I was about to make some popcorn and I realized I made these things so much better. It's all good. 
Crunchy. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. That's good. That's good. That's really good. Way better than doing it in the oven. They get kind of soggy and dried up, right? Yeah, these are beautiful. Aquafaba. I didn't use oil. How come we never thought of this before? We didn't have a really great dehydrator before. This is true. Yeah, it's such a good after school snack. That's what I thought. Tomorrow you're gonna tomorrow you're gonna have cauliflower popcorn. Oh man. I love popcorn, it's my favorite. But this one's gonna be made from cauliflowers. That one is not a staple yet. It's gonna be an experiment. This one is something we used to make all the time, but I think we never really loved it. Oh, but I love it. Now we do. But now I love it even more. Yeah, aquafaba made it crispy and crunchy. Or did it just the dehydrator make it crispy and crunchy? Combination of the two. Oh, yeah, I think also just like cooking it longer. Oh, and he's got the rest of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. It looks like we have a grow up now. A what? Mm. What's a grow up? Daddy's making drugs. I'm glad you don't know what a grow up is, Annie. I've succeeded as a parent. Mm. Back on the dairy train for a second. This was in a recent video. However, it's still perfect for a compilation like this. Non-dairy yogurt. And all you really need to do is use a high protein non-dairy milk. Uh, eight grams protein is ideal. Try to get an unsweetened one. But sweeten is fine too, if you don't mind a little extra sugar in your meal. Um, and this is the yogurt I use for my starter, but what's actually just in here is my old yogurt. So I'm just going to use the yogurt I already made as my starter. And all I've done, it's super simple, is I sterilized my Instant Pot with boiling water. And now I'm literally just going to mix together this entire two liter jug or 1.89 liter jug of this high protein soy milk with like a third to half a cup of this stirred around. So the other things to keep in mind is to take the sealing ring out. If it's, if yours is like mine, it, uh, it's not as new as it used to be. And it just has some extra scents and flavors in there that when you're doing something for a long period of time, you don't want to get into yogurt. And I also, Put this guy on venting. Leave it in venting mode overnight. And then I'm gonna put it on the Instant Pot yogurt setting anywhere from like 110 degrees for eight to 12 hours. It depends on how tangy you like your yogurt. Eventually. Looking yogurty. And then I like to let it just sit and come to room temperature and it'll thicken up a little bit. And then I'm gonna strain it in a nut milk bag inside of a mesh strainer in the fridge for most of the day. And that's gonna take out some of the, I don't know if it's still whey, if it's non-dairy, but it'll take out some of the liquids and it'll just thicken the whole thing up. Many hours later. Oh, there's so much liquid in here. Oh, it's so gross. So it's like half of that amount came out in just water. This should be the right consistency now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour it into individual yogurt containers. It's called a nut milk bag. You just kind of squeeze all up. Look at that. And then I'm gonna take a hand mixer and puree it to get to the right consistency, but that's it then really, it's yogurt. One of the most constant things we make as a staple in this house is granola bars because my wife is obsessed with them and it's one of her main snacks she has at work. What's really awesome about these things is that they are gluten-free obviously because we make them with oats. Um, if we're making them for home, we might not make them nut-free, but it's easy enough to make them nut-free at school. So today I'm gonna be using tahini as like my thing to bind it all together, but you could use peanut butter, you could use almond butter. Uh, and normally I'd probably put a lot of nuts in this thing, but you can just do the same amount and use seeds. So the ingredients I'm gonna put on the side are more uh, just categories of things to use and you can put as much or as little as you want. Just mix that up between various amounts of nuts and seeds, you know? You don't have to use all the same one. It's really important that when you add all the mix-ins like the oats and whatnot, you just pulse it off and on because you don't want it to turn into like a mush. At the end, if you want to add some non-dairy chocolate chips, totally optional. We almost always do it.
We're gonna bake this at 350 for like 25 to 30 minutes, depending on your oven. Let them sit and cool because they're gonna harden up and then just cut them into, I mean, it's as large of a shape as you want. We cut them into like 16s. So now we're gonna make cauliflower popcorn, which is something I've never done before, but it's essentially the same as doing the kale chips. Um, you break your cauliflower down into like popcorn size, bite size pieces. And then we're gonna coat them again. I'm not gonna use olive oil like it suggests. I'm just gonna give it a shot with coconut oil, not coconut oil, aquafaba. And mine's awfully thick, so it should work nicely. Coat the heck out of it, throw the spices on. You can easily customize the spices to your liking. Just like you would with popcorn, right? One of you awesome people, I don't wanna embarrass you by mentioning it if you don't want to be mentioned, sent me this dill pickle seasoning from um, Trader Joe's. So I'm gonna use that today instead. Because why not? We used the chili powder yesterday. Switch it up, right? And then we are going to dehydrate it at 140. I'm gonna try it for five hours and see where we're at by that point and, uh, and how it's going. I'm excited to try this. What's cool about this is it says that it'll stay fresh in the fridge for five days, but if you leave it to dehydrate until it's completely dry and crunchy, you can just keep it on the counter for up to a month. Six hours later. Wait, does it have dill pickle seasoning on it? Yeah. So it's pretty good, honestly. Do you want to try the cauliflower? I'm That's... busy with a cucumber. I don't know how it works. Oh. There you go. Oh, it's like a little door. It's so cute. Stuck. It's not ready, but it's delicious. Mmm. Can I try one? It tastes like dill pickles. Oh yeah, once really that good, though. yeah, once that dried up a bit more. Is it I dill pickle it. flavor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be popcorn. Yeah, it's called pop cauliflower popcorn. Why don't you just use popcorn? Just eat it and just not waste any time. I mean, it's good. It's not popcorn, but it's pretty good. So you can't stop eating it, can you? No, it's good. I can't stop eating it. It's not like popcorn. Feed me, Seymour. It's still a bit chewy. This cauliflower is going sad. I know. I so, it's delicious. Good way to use it. I'm loving this dehydrator. The next recipe might be the one that I get comments about the most. Positive comments, I should add. Not negative comments. Can you imagine? Here's my worst recipe. Enjoy. In this video, you might hear me refer to it as a nacho sauce, but it is just basically an awesome cheese sauce. What's amazing about it is it starts off as more of like a queso, and then when it firms up in the fridge, it turns into a beautiful spread. But you can also freeze it and grate it just like regular cheese blocks. So now we are gonna make the nacho cheese. We're gonna take uh, an onion and a carrot, saute that on the pan. If it starts to stick, you can throw in a little bit of broth. We're just gonna let that cook for about a minute. A little bit of salt on top. It helps to release juices inside the vegetables. I'm gonna add just a little bit of my broth. So now I'm gonna throw in the potatoes uh, and we're gonna let that just cook for about three minutes. So this is cooked down to the right amount. And now we're gonna add some vegetable broth, some tamari. You could also use soy sauce here and some minced garlic. And we are gonna crank this up and get it up to the point where it's at a simmer. And then we're gonna leave it for about 10 to 15 minutes until the carrots and the potatoes are really, really soft. We're just gonna dump all of that good potato carrot goodness into our high-speed blender. This is where the nerdy magic happens. Some tahini. We have lemon juice, paprika, and garlic powder. And last but not least, nutritional yeast. This is the key to making it nice and cheesy. We are gonna blend this until it is nice and smooth. And then we're gonna add that tapioca starch. This is the stuff that's gonna make it really, really get thick and bind like a cheese.
All right, so that's looking pretty well combined. So now we're gonna put it onto the stove top and stir it around and let it just kind of thicken a bit. The consistency you want is somewhat like a gravy, maybe a little thicker than gravy. Another little simple snack I like to make that is really gut healthy and good for us and just uses up stuff we would have probably tossed out is uh, SCOBY gummies. And if you don't know what SCOBY is, it's the leftover, not the leftover, but the extra part of uh, growth from your kombucha SCOBY, if you make kombucha, which I know a lot of you probably don't, but if you do, I'm gonna try to make this real quick. Basically, all we're gonna do is take this stuff that I peeled off of my SCOBY. Walker goes back in his home. I'm gonna soak it in a little bit of fruit juice and a little bit of maple syrup. We're gonna let that sit overnight and let the, the flavor soak in. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna put it in the dehydrator, just like I would the fruit leather that we already made. And, uh, and it's gonna make a delicious, delicious gummy. That's really good for your health gut health in the in the belly that's where your gut is the old junkie dehydrator we had never really cooked it evenly so i'm really hoping this one does a better job let's give it a shot one debt to society later so my kombucha gummies are all done let's give one a little rip let's see what we think it doesn't taste like a gummy from a candy wrapper for sure but my kids love it and they don't eat stuff just because it's healthy, I'll tell you that right now. I, I definitely think this dried a lot even, evener, more even, in this. Uh, I'm loving this dehydrator so far. So now we're gonna make whole wheat sourdough buns. I make whole wheat sourdough all the time, but uh, buns and English muffins and stuff like that are things I like to make from time to time because it saves us buying from the store. And I have the sourdough, so it's easy to make. If you have a sourdough starter, you can make this recipe, if not borrow one from a friend. So it's just like making any kind of bread or dough. I'm mixing, in this case, instead of just straight up water, I'm putting a little bit of plant milk in here. I've got non-dairy milk. Um, what else? And then just the usual, I put a little bit of coconut sugar in here because with the whole wheat, it just helps it rise that much more. You don't really taste the sweetness across the various buns and either way it's less than a teaspoon each one and then uh you could mix a little bit of white flour in here but i just use straight up whole wheat because that's how i roll all right we're gonna let this sit for a bit and then we're gonna knead it and then you gonna let it sit all day and then we're gonna shape it and let it proof for about two hours and then we're gonna bake them many big bags later So banana chips are straight up one of my favorite snacks from childhood. And usually the ones you get in the store are just coated with sugar. And I've tried to make ones in our old dehydrator and they were kind of ghetto and gross. So I'm not 100% sure this is gonna work, but they write a recipe in the book that came with the dehydrator that tells me how to make them. I give it a shot and just hope to hope that my childhood dream being able to make my own healthy banana chips comes true. The trick to this is you need to slice them evenly to ensure like an even drying. So I'm gonna use my mandolin here on the thickest setting. I recommend you do something similar. Uh, another thing that works really well is you have like an old egg slicer. You just put chunks of banana in the middle and use those little wires to cut it. I've done that in the past, but we don't eat eggs anymore and our egg slicer broke and so now I just use mandolin. And then to keep it from getting weird, you can uh, put a little bit of water out with some lemon juice in there just to dilute the water, to dilute the lemon juice, I should say. Brush that over top of the bananas. So we're gonna let this go at around 450 degrees Fahrenheit for eight hours. I'm gonna leave it overnight and I hope to wake up to some delicious banana chips. Eventually. I'll put them on for a little bit longer. This might be a continued experiment. 
it, it'll work in some capacity. They're definitely the best version I've ever made in a dehydrator. This dehydrator is way more consistent than our old one. And they even look better. Like the old ones just looked like these shriveled up things where these look good. I think I cut them too thin. Yeah, I think I cut them too thin and I didn't uh, leave them on long enough. So I'm gonna put them on longer for now. Soon after. So I let them sit for like another hour and a half and they're definitely crisp up. I mean, this is delicious as it is. It's not in my head what I remember as a child, but I think that's also because that stuff was just coated in oil. But this is the best version of a banana chip I've ever made. It was a bit of an experiment and they keep on tweaking it. I also think I was rushing it and the bananas weren't quite ready. So if you wanna see a revised recipe for this after I perfect this recipe, let me know and I'll include it in a future video. Thanks again for joining us for this compilation. Don't forget to check out London Sunshine's offer. If you wanna get a dehydrator like the one I've been using in this video and use that discount code PB with J for 10% off of that or any of their other awesome products. If you've enjoyed this video or found it inspiring in any way, let us know in the comments down below what you think you're gonna make or what some of your go-to snacks and staples are. Hit that like button to let YouTube know that you enjoyed this content and also subscribe so you don't miss any of the new stuff we have coming up. And YouTube would really love it if you watched this video next because they think it is perfect for you. You probably haven't watched it yet because let's be honest, they know what you watch. But that's a good thing because that's how you find channels like this. All right, I should go now. Bye.